Like a rock, the heartbeat of America, Chevy runs deep and find new roads. Chevy trucks are one of the embodiments of Americana, and they've been building trucks since 1918, becoming associated integrally with the American lifestyle. Welcome back to All Cars, y'all. If you're new here, I am John, and this is a far too brief history of Chevy trucks. And as with my other recent histories, we'll be focusing on the light-duty, consumer-focused trucks in this episode. Chevy was founded in 1911 by the brothers Louis and Arthur Chevrolet, along with the ousted founder of General Motors, William C. Durant. With Chevy becoming a success, Durant used the opportunity to acquire a controlling stake in General Motors in May of 1918 and returned wrapping Chevy into the GM family. Chevy had begun selling their Series 490 in 1915, and after the merger, Durant wanted a competitor to the one-ton Ford Model TT truck. Their first answer was the half-ton 1918 Chevrolet Series 490 light delivery chassis based on the passenger car, and the separate one-ton Chevy Model T that stood for truck that was shared with GMC and had a one-ton payload capacity. Through the 20s, Chevy offered vehicles with different series every year, labeled under the Superior name. Included with this nearly yearly revision were trucks such as the 1924 Chevy and commercial chassis. In 1927, Chevy introduced the Series AA, which included trucks for Chevy and GMC, and is notable not only for the use of an accelerator pedal instead of a throttle on the steering column, but also for the Chevy and GMC parts being shipped for overseas delivery and assembly. In 1928, Chevy replaced the Series AA Capital with the Series AB National, largely to compete with the Ford Model A and using the older 171 cubic inch four-cylinder to produce 35 horsepower. For 1929, Chevy replaced the AB with the AC International, adding the new Stove Bolt 6 194 cubic inch six-cylinder engine producing 46 horsepower and 125 pound-feet of torque. For 1930, the AD Universal replaced the AC, keeping the same engine but with multiple refinements such as hydraulic shocks. While the Great Depression raged, it was replaced in 31 with the AE Independence, where the wheelbase now increased 2 inches to 109. For 32, the BA Confederate was launched with minimal changes. The Stovebolt 6 continued but improved to produce 60 horsepower. For 33, the CA Eagle was released, continuing the use of the car chassis now called the Master, and with a larger 206 cubic inch Stovebolt 6 now making 65 horsepower and 146 pound feet, and a smaller 181 cubic inch 6 making 60 horsepower. Multiple series continued in the Chevy Master Series from 33 to 42 until the trucks were replaced with the AK series of trucks. For 1941, the AK series launched and the trucks split from their Chevy cars in design while also being still based on GM's A platform used in the Chevy Deluxe and sharing mechanicals with the newest generation Suburban. This generation lasted from 41 to 47, obviously interrupted by the war years. After World War II, Chevy completed its first major redesign of its light and heavy-duty trucks with their so-called Advanced Design, launching in summer of 1947. Sold through 1955, this design launched Chevy to number one in truck sales until 1955 and was available in half, three-quarter, and full-ton capacities as well as short and long wheelbases. While there were yearly changes, a few of note were that in 1950 they began using telescopic shock absorbers and in 1952 they replaced the 80 mile per hour speedometer with one that went to 90. And again in 53 when the 216 cubic inch inline 6 usage ended. For 54 they refreshed the truck with a one piece windshield, revised interior, and exterior design changes. Two new engines, a 235 cubic inch and a 261 cubic inch straight sixes were added as well as a hydromatic automatic transmission being available. For 1955, Chevy launched its Task Force line of trucks that were available through 59. Sales started in early 55, but both the new model called the second series and the previous model called the first series were available for a time. Intended to be far more stylish, but just as rugged as before, it had the industry's first wraparound windshield and an optional wraparound rear window, as well as a taller cab, a 12-volt electrical system, integrated headlights, an in-cab step, and for the first time, optional power steering, brakes, and a V8. 
a column mounted three speed manual was standard, but also an available four speed on the floor or hydromatic auto. Once again, yearly updates were made in 58. A substantial refresh brought freshened styling, four headlights, and available factory AC. Of special note was the 55 Cameo Carrier, intended to offer a more expensive, upscale, and stylish car based look and luxury on robust truck mechanicals. The deluxe cab with its giant rear window was used and mated to rear fenders made of fiberglass building off the experience with the Corvette, with the bed being steel. Every cameo came with a two-tone paint job in white with red contrast, and inside were car-like luxuries such as push-button radio, a Corvette gauge cluster, and carpet. While only being on sale until around 58 and only selling about 10,000 units, its higher price showed people would pay for luxuries in a truck and would have long-term impacts on the market. Also, other manufacturers noted the success of the smooth bed and responded, Ford releasing their style side in 1957. GM canceled the Cameo and added a fleet side bed to their truck lineup in late 58. In the fall of 59, Chevy launched their replacement trucks as 1960 models, kicking off their CK lineup. For the first time, the platform was developed exclusively as a truck and not derived from the GM A-body platform. Gone was the previous straight frame replaced with a drop center frame that was stronger while also lowering the cab about 7 inches and moving to an independent front suspension with torsion bars. Styling was more contemporary, and as with their previous trucks, only a two-door cab was available. The fleet side and step side beds returned with a nine foot bed option for the step side. The one half ton trucks came in two wheelbases of 115 inches or 127 inches and with six and a half or eight foot beds respectively. Initially, three engines were offered the standard 236 cubic inch straight six with 135 horsepower, a 305 cubic inch V6 with 150, and a 283 cubic inch V8 making 160 horsepower. This was also the first model to offer a factory-installed four-wheel drive system. The CK designation came from naming by GMC, with C being two-wheel drive and K being the 4x4 option. The two-digit number afterwards indicated the payload rating, with 10 being the one-half-ton models. For 62, the hood was restyled. In 63, the grille was restyled, and while the front suspension was redesigned with coil springs replacing the torsion bars, two new inline six-cylinder engines were made available, replacing the 236, a 230 cubic inch making 140 horsepower, and a 292 cubic inch making 165, while the V8 was massaged up to 165 horsepower. For 64, the cab received a major update, redesigning the windshield and A-pillar while updating the dash and the door panels. In 1965, another option, a 327 cubic inch V8 making 220 horsepower was available on the three-quarter or one-ton trucks, but propagated down to the half-ton in 1966, when the 230 cubic inch 6 was replaced with a 250 cubic inch 6 making 155 horsepower. The second generation CK was introduced for the 1967 model year and lasted through 1972. Known as the Action Line, it was largely on the same frame. The body was totally redesigned and brought in lessons from the Cameo experiment by adding optional sedan features like AM FM radio, carpet, and two-tone paint. Offered in three wheelbases of 115, 127, or 133 inches, this was the last Chevy pickup truck offered with only a two-door cab. At launch, the Action Line carried over the four engines from the previous generation, but in 1968, the 283 V8 was enlarged to 307. A 396 V8 became the first large block V8 offered in a GM light-duty truck. And in 1969, the 327 grew to 350 cubic inches. For 1968, a 50th anniversary package was available with an exclusive white, gold, white paint scheme. Minor revisions continued through its run until 1971 when it got a mid-cycle refresh. The styling was revised, light-duty trucks got front disc brake standard, a refreshed interior which was revised again lightly for 1972. The 396 V8 was revised and now was a 402, but labeled as a 400. Multiple transmissions were offered throughout production, including a 3-speed column manual, a 3-speed overdrive, several 4-speed manuals, a 2-speed power glide, and two 
turbo hydromatic three-speed autos. The third generation launched in 1973 and lasted nearly 20 years until 1991. Work on this generation began in 1968, including simulating components on computers before prototypes were built. Now designated as the rounded line, but nicknamed the square body, it increased the customer-focused features making trucks more comfortable as more were being used as personal transportation. Attention was paid to the aerodynamics, the windshield was larger, the styling was more holistic, effort was put in to reduce noise, and the interior was made more comfortable and safer with bright work being used both inside and out in higher quality and soft touch materials. Higher trim lines used better materials and even added sound deadening. Wheelbases were extended slightly to 117.5 and 131.5 inches and debuted with five different engine options. A 250 cubic inch 6 was standard with optional 292, 6, 307, V8, 350 V8, and a 454 replacing the previous 402. In 75, a 400 cubic inch V8 was introduced as the largest engine in the K series, and in 78, they were the first major U.S. manufacturer to market a diesel in their light trucks with a 350 cubic inch Oldsmobile diesel V8. In 75, the grille was revised, being more flush mounted. A C20 four door pickup truck was introduced almost 10 years after competitors started offering them, and the Scottsdale and Silverado trims both debuted. In 77, 79, and 80, the front fascia was again updated and in 1980 would add both a CB radio and tape players as options. In 1981, the lineup got a mid-cycle refresh, lightening the truck by nearly 300 pounds and again improving aerodynamics. Frequent updates continued through the run, including updating powertrains. For 81, the 400 was replaced on the K-Series by the 454, and in 82, the Olds diesel was replaced with the 379 cubic inch Detroit diesel, while a four-speed turbo hydromatic became available. In 1985, the 250 cubic inch 6 was finally retired after nearly 20 years and was replaced with a 4.3 liter or 262 cubic inch V6. 1987, the fourth generation CK was introduced, but the third generation continued selling until 1991, being renamed as the R or V series and only being available in three quarter ton and higher. The fourth generation didn't get a cool name, but was internally known as the GMT 400 platform and lasted from 1988 to 2002, being the last of the CK branded model line. Still square, key to this redesign was to reduce weight and improve aerodynamics for fuel economy while making the interiors more comfortable. Exterior width was reduced by nearly 4 inches while interior space increased. It continued with the frame layout of the previous generation, but was an all-new design with fully welded frame and fully boxed rails forward of the cab. The two wheelbases of the previous truck were retained at 117.5 and 131.5 inches, but the new extended cab had a 155.5 inch wheelbase. All pickups, including the four-wheel drive models, now had front independent suspension, and four different body styles were offered. Fleet side single cab, extended cab, or crew cab, and the step side single cab, finally giving GM products an extended cab nearly 15 years after their competitors. But they were the first full-size truck line to remove vent windows. Trim lines were available as the Cheyenne, Scottsdale, and Silverado, a name that debuted back in 1975. Available engines were carried over from the previous generation in the half-ton models and were the 4.3 liter V6, the 5.0 and the 5.7 liter V8s, and a 6.2 liter diesel V8. In 1989, the Z75 off-road package was offered with skid plates, heavy-duty shocks, aluminum wheels, and fancy Z51 graphics. For 1990, they were given a mild exterior freshening while also introducing the WT trim with the 4.3 liter V6 single cab and 8 foot bed, as well as the 454 SS, combining the sport equipment package with a 230 horsepower 7.4 liter V8 from the 3500 series. In 95, the interior was heavily revised while adding the new mandatory airbag, revising the gauges, controls, and dash, as well as four-wheel ABS, center brake light, and more. 
For 96, the extended cab trucks received the option of a third door on the passenger side in some trim combinations. The engines were upgraded and now referred to as the Vortec lineup with the 4300, 5000, 5700, and 7400, all with sequential fuel injection and improved horsepower and torque, while the diesel was dropped. The last full production year for this generation was 1999 as the next trucks were coming in model year 2000, but they were still sold at two fleets as the Silverado Classic in only the three-door extended cab with a 6.5-foot fleet side bed configuration and only with the 5.0 or 5.7 liter V8. While the 2500 and 3500 continued through 2000 and the 3500 HD chassis cab ended in 2002. For the 1999 model year, the CK line was replaced with the Silverado line, taking its name from the top line of the previous series. This model was still being sold today, now in its fourth generation. While not using the CK designation, Chevy still uses CC or CK for their model codes to designate two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. For the first generation of the Silverado, lasting from 99 to the 2006 model year, the previous GMT 400 platform was replaced with the GMT 800. Designed to be a flexible platform, it has three section frame system where four different front modules, seven midsections, and four rear sections could be mixed and matched to support as many as 40 different truck configurations. Available in three cabs, the two-door standard, three- or four-door extended, and later with a front-hinged four-door crew cab in 2004, and three bed lengths of 69.2 inches, 78.7 inches, or 97.6 inches, and with the standard box available in step side. Trim lines were base, LS, or LT. Engines throughout the run were versions of the 4.3 liter V6, 4.8 liter, and 5.3 liter V8s, generally updated every few years to improve power and torque. For the 2003 model year, it was mildly restyled with a new front end and slightly updated rear and revised interior, audio, and HVAC. Also new was the WT trim, and the LT model was divided into LT1, LT2, and LT3. Also in 2003, the Silverado SS appeared with the 6-liter Vortec V8 with 345 horsepower, 4-speed auto, and all-wheel drive with 4-wheel disc brakes. In 2004, GM launched a hybrid version of the truck using the 5.3-liter Vortec 5300 in a mild hybrid form through 2007 when it was replaced with an updated hybrid powertrain in 2009. In 2006, another revised grille and hood appeared just in time for the next generation to appear for 2007 model year, while this first generation stayed in production through 2007 as the Classic. The second generation was the GMT 900 and ran from 2007 to 2013 with redesigned exterior, interior, frame, and suspension. Once again improving aerodynamics, it was offered with a two-door regular cab, four-door extended cab, and four-door crew cabs. Engine lineups were updated to their Gen 4 family and expanded with a 6-liter joining in 2007 and upsized to 6.2-liter in 2009, and the 4.8 and 5.3-liter receiving power bumps in 2010. 2008 was the end of manual transmissions on these full-size trucks. For 2009 model year, a new hybrid offering came along based on the 6-liter V8 and a trick transmission with two 60-kilowatt mo electric motors, three planetary gears, and four clutches, but poor sales meant it was ended in 2013. For the 2010 model year, the truck received the obligatory refresh of the interior and multiple revisions to engine and transmission availability across trim lines, and another refresh followed in 2012. The third generation dropped the GMT 900 nomenclature and debuted for the 2013 model year, lasting through 2018 for the 1500 series and 2019 for the HD model. The frame was now fully boxed, high-strength steel made with hydroforming, while aluminum for the hood and control arms was used to help save weight, as was the decision to make the bed from roll-formed steel instead of stamped steel. Interior comfort took center stage with an increased focus on convenience, making Chevy's MyLink touchscreen available with Bluetooth, USB ports, OnStar standard input jacks for iPod and iPhone, and optional premium sound systems. Three new engines were available, a 4.3 liter Ecotec V6, a 5.3 liter and 6.2 liter Ecotec V8s, while the 4.8 liter Vortec was dropped and the new High Country trim was introduced, leading Chevy into the luxury market. 
In 2015, Chevy introduced multiple editions of the Silverado with the Rally Edition 1 and 2, Midnight Edition, Custom Sports Edition, Custom Sport Plus Edition, Blackout Edition, and Texas Edition. There was a refresh in 2016 with new front styling, larger MyLink system, HD radio, some received Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability, and in some trims, a wireless charging pad. Special editions were expanded, including the 2017 High Desert package that included bed divider, hard tonneau cover, and lockable storage bins on the sides of the truck bed. As in previous generations, this continued to be sold in 2019 along with the next generation Silverado, but renamed as the Silverado LD for light duty and only in the double cab standard box 5.3 liter V8 setup. The fourth and current generation of the Silverado was unveiled formally at the Detroit North American International Auto Show on January 13, 2018, exactly 100 years after Chevy delivered its first truck to customers. Released as a 2019 model year, the truck is based on an all-new T1XX platform, designed from the ground up and underpinning not only the Silverado but the body-on-frame Tahoe, Suburban, Escalade, and GMC variants. Styling was heavily revised both exterior and interior. While inside the infotainment and features were improved, including optional GPS, satellite radio, premium audio, and luxury touches like heated leather seats, multi-angle camera systems, and more, the early reviews were critical of the interior material's quality. Trim lines at launch were intended to be the WT, Custom, Custom Trail Boss, LT, RST, LT Trail Boss, and High Country, and in 2020, the Rally and Midnight Special Editions were added back. Through its run, the truck has had six different engine options. A 285 horsepower 4.3 liter V6, a 2.7 liter turbo 4-cylinder make 310 horsepower, the 5.3 liter V8 at 355 horsepower, a 6.2 liter V8 at 420 horsepower, and a 277 horsepower 3 liter Duramax inline 6 diesel. Two wheel drive and four wheel drive models were available, and engine and trims could be paired with a 6, 8, or 10 speed automatic. And the 5.3 and 6.2 liter have dynamic fuel management that can deactivate cylinders. In 2021, updates included the new Multiflex tailgate, taken from the GMC Sierra but renamed. For the 2022 model year, the truck received a mid-cycle refresh, the front styling was updated, the 6-speed automatic was dropped, and the interior heavily refreshed and making it more competitive, including an optional 13.4-inch infotainment screen. The new trim level ZR2 was introduced between the High Country and LTZ, along with many other changes to options varying by trim line. By the first quarter of 2022, the Ram 1500 had slightly outsold the Silverado, and one year later, in first quarter 2023, sales were up slightly, allowing Chevy to take second place back, but this modest uptick still left it stuck at 26% market share and tens of thousands of sales behind Ford's F-Series. Before we close out, there's one other model to bring up. While we're not discussing the various heavy-duty trucks, GMC offerings, El Caminos, or varied SUVs based on the trucks, in the 2000s, Chevy experimented with a mashup of the Suburban and the Silverado in the Avalanche. Reminiscent of both the unibody Ford trucks of the 60s as well as products like the El Camino, the Avalanche was body on frame, but the bed was integrated with the cab with a mid-gate that could be folded to create a longer bed. It lasted for two generations and only as a Chevy offering. The first generation launched as a 2002 model year offering based on the GMT 800 platform from the then current first generation Silverado, and its front predated the upcoming refresh on the trucks. Offered as a one half ton with the 5.3 liter V8 making 285 horsepower, or as a three quarter ton series with the 8.1 liter making 340 horsepower, it had available four wheel drive as well as a Z71 off road package, a Z66 premium on-road package with a sporty suspension and no four-wheel drive. Heavily cladded on the body, it was very well equipped and options included OnStar, cassette, leather, dual power bucket seats, and other features. Updated slightly for 2003, the cladding became an option, the interior updated to the current Tahoes and interior options as well as optional rear seat entertainment. 
For 2007 model year, the second generation Avalanche, now based on the GMT 900 platform, dropped and once again resembled the Tahoe and Suburban while retaining the mid-gate and integrated bed, but the 2500 series was discontinued. Updated versions of the 5.3 liter as well as a 6 liter V8 were offered, with the 6 liter dropped after 2009. The truck came in three trim levels, LS, LT, and LTZ, and also the return of the off-road Focus Z71 package, this time with an exclusive automatic locking rear differential. The Avalanche ended after the 2013 model year, and for its last year, a special edition Black Diamond model was offered. While options and packages were largely unchanged, buyers received special badging on their trucks, as well as a personalized coffee table book with a copy of their window sticker. Sales for the first generation peaked in 2003 at over 93,000, but fell even after the second generation debuted, falling to 16,000 in 2009, before recovering slightly to just under 24,000 in 2012. The Chevy trucks have many times led the way in styling and innovations like independent front suspension, and certainly in interesting platforms names like the Action Line or the Rounded Line. And over that time, they built a passionate fan base of true believers in the strength of these trucks. And when you're combining Chevy and GMC sales, they often outsell the Ford F-Series juggernaut. But head-to-head -head with Ford, Chevy's not been able to knock off the F-Series off the leaderboard for over 47 years now. Putting together this history led me to believe that for all their innovation and focus on trucks, Far too often, they've been a half step behind the leader in style, powertrain, or offering packages with increasing focus such as off-road or luxury. Personally, I think they've got a bright future ahead. And thanks for being here, and a special thanks to my Patreons for helping to support this channel. This is only possible because of you, who support independent auto content. So please consider showing this channel some love. Thanks for being here. The frame was now fully boxed, high strength. <laughs> Upcoming refresh on the top. The fuck.